I got a lot of questions how to connect to your Raspberry on a boat using it as an access point, get the Wi-Fi connection to the harbor and uh, using your smartphone. So we will take a look uh, today on Raspberry on a boat, how to use open plotter access point. Yeah, open plot is already installed like we did this in chapter one of open plotter and we're going to settings to install the network component and i did this already you just go down to networks and press install and you're ready to go so fairly easy um, i have just an internal wireless lan currently no other external one so we will connect the usb stick later so you start the network program, which is now installed, and you need to select this internal one uh, for your access point so that you can connect. And don't take the access point and station because then it would try to connect to two different wireless LANs at once, and this is a mess. It will not work stable. You can select 5 gigahertz if your clients support that, and don't select this one. This will bridge your Ethernet port to your access point, and on a boat this doesn't make sense and is an issue anyway. Now you need to define your SSID. The sharing internet device, we come to that. That is the one when you want to go to the internet. For now, just select any of those. We will change this later, um, because now USB, for example, is not there. Um, and your SSID, I take Surreal here. I take for this demonstration the default password of 12345678. Open Plotter will notice that and reminds me to change that. Take a channel which is available in your country and save. And when you save this one, you need to reboot. Um, so just say yes, your system will reboot. And our access point is set already, so we can connect already to our Raspberry wirelessly, but we have no internet for now. So I'm still connected via Ethernet. So when I, I can sh just re again use remote access to go to my Raspberry. And now with Check Network, you can see all the different uh, addresses and you see our new wi wireless LAN interface. This is our access point. And I still see the Ethernet one because um, I still have the cable plugged. But I could also now connect wirelessly with my PC um, for a remote desktop. You saw I did this and I disconnected Ethernet now on 10.10.10.1. 10, 10, 10, That's the default address of the access point. I can connect with remote desktop. You can also use a VNC, of course, to your Raspberry. And when we now go to the network settings and we check the configuration, we will just see the wireless LAN. That's all. No internet, unfortunately, yet. To get an internet connection, if we don't want to use the internal Ethernet port, we can use an external wireless LAN adapter or we connect our smartphone via USB and then we turn on USB tethering in the uh, connection settings of our smartphone. With that, we have direct internet access for all clients connected uh, to our access point. So like this tablet, just connect it and check if it is working. If it's not working, uh, check the network settings. If you see this, tethering is still off. Um, so even if it's connected by USB, this is the first thing you will see when tethering is on. That's the USB side of the Raspberry. And after a few seconds, you will see a second USB IP address, and that's the side of the smartphone. And this looks good. So it, that's the way it should look like. And of course, we also need to uh, correct the access point settings if we didn't do this at the beginning. So the sharing internet device must be set. Just say edit again. And when you um, open the drop down, you can select USB zero. This would work. However, I recommend to use auto because later on we go to the wireless uh, settings. And if auto is working, and it usually does, there is no need to change that. If you save it now, you need to reboot, but then your access point with tethering should work. If you don't want to use your smartphone, you can also use a wireless LAN dongle, for example, the TP-Link, which I use here, and put this to your Raspberry. 
And now you need to install Wi-Fi drivers. OpenPlotter supports several chipsets. It uh, did find my TP-Link already and you see the chipsets below which are supported. So just install them from OpenPlotter directly. If you can't find your chipset here, you need to install your driver manually if a Linux driver is available. Afterwards, you can check your network and you see I have three addresses here because I did already connect to my internal wireless LAN and I did connect Ethernet again just to have internet access to install the Wi-Fi drivers. Now I removed Ethernet and you see I still have the second wireless LAN network because I did already, as I said, connect to my home wireless LAN network. Later on you will need to connect to the Harbors network with that. And now let's check with uh, the browser if the internet is working and everything is good. So that means if now somebody is connecting to our access point, he can already go to the internet. So that's working. Again, if this is not working, check your access point settings um, auto or the device which you're using. All right, um, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it and you're able to use this with your boat or also with any other uh, application access point settings. Just remember firewall is an issue. You have no access here. Usually to keep it safe, you should do something additionally. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.